Welcome to Xara Web Designer 7 Premium Tutorial from Xara Template. This is lesson number 10 for the Shape Tool. And in this tutorial, we'll be going over how to use the Shape Tool to draw a straight line versus a curved line. We'll be showing how to make a smooth join versus a cusp join. We'll show how to delete points within a line. We'll also show you how to break points within a line and separate lines. And we'll be doing a few other things in this tutorial to help you with using the shape tool with an XR web designer. If you haven't already, go ahead and start a blank new document. Once you start a blank new document, go to your toolbar and look for about the third option down. Looks kind of like a brush. We're not going to select that. We're just going to that to show the other options. And you'll see kind of a icon that looks like a backwards S with a line through it. Go ahead and select that. That's the shape tool. And then you'll notice that our cursor changes with kind of a backwards S and a pair of crosshairs to show that we have the shape tool selected. Now before we draw, why don't you look at your info bar and depending what option you have selected up here, it's going to affect how we draw the line. I'm going to start off with the make curve option, so make sure you have that selected. And I'm going to keep cusp join selected as well in the info bar, so make sure those two things are selected and then click and left click anywhere in your workspace document and you'll see that once you click anywhere in your workspace there's a red note and that's your starting point or starting point handle for drawing your line so once you do that go ahead and left click and hold down your left click mouse button and drag anywhere while holding that down and keep that left click mouse button held down while you're dragging and you'll see that there's a blue line and that blue line just represents where that line is going to land. So let go of your cursor and your mouse and you'll see that now it's drawing this straight line. And you may ask, well, why am I drawing a straight line? I learned that already. Well, the straight line tool only allows you to draw straight lines. And in this case, if, you'll, if you look at the end point that we just drew, there's another red uh, point handle. And if we click and drag anywhere in the document, now we get this curved line. So the shape tool allows you to create a different type of shape then the straight line tool will. And if we continue to do this, it'll get longer and it'll continue to grow. But let's say you don't want to draw a curved line. Go back to your info bar and select the, the make line option. And once you select that, once you select that, click and drag anywhere in your document. Well, hold on one second for some reason. My, there we go. Now it's working. Computer kind of slowed down a minute there. Sorry about that. But yeah, if you click and drag like you just did before, at any point in the document, it'll start to draw, but it'll do it without the curved line. And you can switch between the two options. You can go back to curve if you want, and you can start drawing a curved kind of shape by clicking and dragging in the document. And let's say you wanted to close the shape, and you're finished making it. You want it to come one solid shape. Then, you know, this is our starting, I mean, I'm sorry, our ending uh, point or point handle that we just created. We'll go back to the starting point, place our cursor over that first starting point handle, and you'll see that our cursor kind of has this extra crosshair box, and that's going to close the shape when we click on it. So left click on that, and you'll notice that it closes the shape. And so now, if we wanted to, we could actually change the color of this whole shape. So let's go to the color editor tool at the bottom here. Left click on that. And then if you change the color, it changes the whole color of that shape we just created. Now, another, th another thing I want to show you is uh, the difference between a smooth join and a cusp join. So let's go ahead and close the color editor. And let's go ahead and try to adjust one of these point handles on this shape we just created. So select one of the point handles. You'll notice that there's two outer uh, nodes. If you select the one on the right, in my, our case, you can select the one on the left if you want, whichever you decide. Just click on one of those and left click and drag up or down. And you notice that only one side of this line is, uh, is uh, affected. So this is the point handle that we have selected and only the right side of that point handle is being adjusted. So this line on the right hand side of it and if we go on this other side, it only affects the left-hand side 
of the point line of the point handle. Well, let's say that you wanted both sides of this affected. You would go to your info bar and you select smooth join. And what that's going to do is when you select one of those outer nodes, it affects both sides. So if you push down on one side, the other side goes up on the opposite side of the handle. If you push up on one side, the opposite side of the point handle goes downward. And so depending on what kind of shape you're making, you may want to, to do that. So let's kind of adjust the shape. You don't have to make it exactly like mine. Again, select this, this point node here, set it to smooth join, and let's adjust it using the using the options that I showed you. So you can kind of push that around and you can change each of these to a smooth join if you want. You don't have to. But that should give you an idea of how you can adjust the the shape in different ways. And if you wanted to do maybe you wanted to convert it back to to a a straight option where it doesn't affect both sides, then just set it back to a cusp join and then it'll only affect one side and not both sides. So you can alternate and change it to get the precise perfect shape that you're looking for. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to uh, break a point apart. So let's go ahead and delete this shape. We don't need this shape anymore. Go ahead and hit delete. And I apologize for the noise if you can hear any in the background. Uh, unfortunately there's some people working on uh, cutting cutting some grass or something outside so I do apologize for that uh, next thing you want to do and I apologize again because there's a phone call coming through in the middle of our presentation here so I apologize again for that okay now let's get back into the presentation <laughs> now that that's out the way you'll see that there's a, a option to break away uh, points in your design. You'll see it up here in the info bar. So let's go ahead and draw our line. And you're going to make a three point line. I made three points on it. And you're going to select the the middle node here, or middle point handle, and you're going to select break away at points. Then you're going to go to your toolbar, select the selector tool, then click in any blank space in your workspace, and then click on that line that we broke apart. And if you click and drag one of the lines apart, you see that it broke it apart at that at that point handle. So that's what it does when you break away a point. It separates the line into two pieces. So if you ever need to break a line apart, that's how you would do it. Let's go ahead and select the selector tool again. And we're going to create another line with three points. And then we're going to select the middle point again, or the middle point handle. And this time we're going to delete the point. We're not going to break the line apart, but by deleting the point, it just removes that point from the line. And then in this case, it it calculates and makes the, the changes that are necessary. So that's how you break away and delete points. And that pretty much sums up how you create lines and shapes using the shape tool. There's some other things that you can do to adjust it or fine tune it, but we won't really get into that. I don't think it's necessary uh, for these beginner tutorials right now. So hopefully that helped you to learn how to use the the shape tool and create custom shapes. I'm going to also show you actually one of the shapes that I created using the shape tool. So here's something that I've created and you know how to make most of this design actually. I call it wacky inspiration because it looks kind of like a wacky logo but this uses a, a drop shadow which you already know how to do. It uses the field tool to change the color types across a spectrum which you already know how to do and it also uses a stroke I'm not sure if we taught you that yet but you can almost make this design and I'll show you what parts you can make with the knowledge that you have if you've watched all the previous tutorials you should be able to make this initial shape that you see here right now with the knowledge that you have so far so just wanted to give you an idea of what you can create in that these tutorials aren't just you know being taught to bore you but there's actually a reason that you're learning how to use some of these different tools so yeah go ahead and send us a message if you have any questions through YouTube or you can also subscribe to our uh, videos and stay up to date on any new releases and don't forget to give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down depending on how well uh, you think the tutorial is 
And if you think it's not that great, definitely give us some feedback because we're looking to improve on helping you learn how to use Xara Web Designer 7 Premium. Thanks again for viewing this tutorial and have a wonderful day.